Okay, so this next video lecture is still the continuation of our Module 6 Expenditure Cycle Part 2 for our Payroll and Fixed Asset Processing. So we are now in the conceptual Fixed Asset System. So basically, you, we all know that Fixed Assets are, uh, examples of this are our property, plant, and equipment which are used in the operation of a business. So, relatively, they are permanent items that often uh, collectively represent the largest financial investment by the organization. Because uh, fixed assets also is, uh, it needs a huge amount of investment. Okay. So, examples of our fixed assets include the land, buildings, furniture, machinery, motor vehicles, and others. A firm's fixed asset system processes transactions related to the acquisition, maintenance, and the disposition of these fixed assets. So the specific objectives of this fixed asset system are first, to process the acquisition, how it should be properly processed, okay, our fixed assets as needed and in accordance with formal management approval and procedures. Second, how to maintain adequate accounting records for our asset acquisition, cost, description, and physical location in the organization. Third, how to maintain accurate depreciation records for the depreciable assets in accordance with acceptable method under our generally accepted accounting principles. Fourth, provide management with information to help plan for future fixed asset investment or whether to invest in a new um fixed asset or to still continue to use the old asset and just maintain it and repair it okay and number five to properly record the retirement and disposal of this fixed assets so here uh, the fixed asset system shares some characteristics with our expenditure cycle but there are two important differences okay that distinguish this two system first our expenditure cycle process routines, this mainly is for the acquisition of raw materials and uh, finished goods inventories. While the fixed asset system, this process is non-routine okay, transactions because it's not every day that you will purchase, you will retire, or you will add fixed asset. Okay? That's why it's considered to be non-routine transactions. Okay. Managers in virtually all function air or functional areas of the organization make capital investments okay, in fixed assets, but these transactions will occur with less regularity than our inventory acquisitions. Because as mentioned, fixed assets uh, transactions are unique. Uh, they require specific management approval and explicit authorization before it can be processed. So in contrast, the organizations often uh, automate the authorization procedures for routine acquisition of the inventory. Whereas for our fixed asset, it should have an explicit authorization and verification from the management before it can be processed. So the second difference between this system is that organizations usually treat inventory acquisitions as an expense for the current period, while for our fixed asset, we capitalize it, okay? Because uh, the entity will incur expenditure, capital expenditure for the current year, but the the return or the benefit will be for a longer period of time. That's why it's capitalized, okay? For a multiple period, because we all know that there is a productive life in a fixed asset which extends beyond one year. So, its acquisition cost is apportioned over its lifetime and depreciated in accordance with the accounting convention and statutory requirements which fits to the nature of the fixed asset and how it is used or depending on the choice of the management. So, therefore, fixed assets accounting system include cost allocation and matching procedures that are not part of the routine expenditure system. Meaning, in this case, matching principle is we will recognize the expense once the benefit is also recognized for the same period. Okay, so what is the logic 
of a fixed asset system. So here, the process involves three categories. We have the asset acquisition, asset maintenance, and asset disposal. Okay? So for asset acquisition, of course, this usually begins with the department manager or the user or the department that needs okay, this fixed asset. So they recognize the need to obtain a new asset or replace an existing one. So authorization and approval procedures over this transaction will depend on the asset's value and its benefit, okay, which will give, uh, which will be provided to the entity. So the department managers typically they have authority to approve purchases below a certain materiality limit, but once this amount is above their materiality limit, then they need uh, the approval of the higher uh, management or even the shareholders. Okay, so capital expenditures above the limit will require approval from the higher management. This may involve a formal cost-benefit analysis or formal solic solicitation of bidding from suppliers before it can be processed. So once the request is approved and a supplier is selected through bidding, the fixed asset acquisition task is similar now to the expenditure cycle procedure uh, with two noteworthy differences. First, the receiving department will deliver the asset into the custody of the user or the department or the manager than a central store or warehouse. Second, the fixed asset department, not inventory control, okay, will perform the record keeping function. This is to emphasize the segregation of duties. So this is an example of the data flow diagram for our fixed asset system which were uh, discussed in the previous section. For asset maintenance, so asset maintenance, on the other hand, this involves adjusting the fixed asset subsidiary account. Okay, so their balances as the assets excluding the land, of course, they are depreciated over time or with usage or depending on what depreciation method was used. So common depreciation methods is uh, uh, that is used are the straight line, sum of the years, or SYD digits, double declining balance, and units of production. So this method of depreciation and period use should reflect as closely as possible on the asset's actual decline in utility to the firm. So meaning, they would depreciate the, the fixed asset depending on how it is used for, um, depending on what uh, nature of this uh, asset is being used by the organization okay so accounting conventions and internal revenue services rules sometimes specify the depreciation that should be used so in this case the entity should will follow that okay for example businesses must depreciate new office building using straight line method and use a period of at least 40 years for their useful life the depreciation of fixed asset used to manufacture products is charged to manufacturing overhead and then it will allocate it will be allocated later on to our work in process. So here depreciation charges from assets not used in manufacturing are treated as expense for the current period, while depreciation calculations are transactions that the fixed asset system must be designed to anticipate internally when no external event or source document triggers the action. So an important record used to initiate this task is, of course, to have their depreciation schedule. So here, they have, will have a separate depreciation schedule will, uh, that will be prepared by the system for each type of fixed asset okay, in their subsidiary ledger. And a depreciation schedule will also show when and how much depreciation to record. Of course, this is shown in the computation and what type of depreciation method that they used. So it will also show when to stop taking the depreciation if or once the, the fixed asset is considered to be fully depreciated. So this information in a management report is also useful for planning asset retirement and replacement later on. Asset maintenance, this also involves adjusting the asset accounts to reflect the cost of physical improvement 
that increase the asset's value or even to extend its useful life. Okay, because there are repairs and maintenance which uh, is considered to be part of an addition of the fixed asset while others just increase the value or other it may extend its useful life. So such enhan enhancements which are themselves capital capital investment will be processed as new acquisition uh, as new asset acquisitions. Finally, the fixed asset system must promote also accountability by keeping track of the physical location of these fixed assets. Unlike inventories, which are usually consolidated in uh, secure areas, our fixed assets are distributed throughout the organization and are subject to risk from theft or even misappropriation. So when one department transfers custody of an asset to another department, this information related to the transfer should be recorded in the fixed asset subsidiary ledger. Okay, so each subsidiary record should indicate the current location of our asset. So the ability to locate and verify the physical existence of these fixed assets is very important, especially in audit. And for asset disposal. So for asset disposal, when an asset has reached the end of its useful life, uh, or when management decides to dispose these fixed assets, it should be removed from the fixed asset subsidiary ledger. So it will begin when the responsible manager issues a request to dispose of these fixed assets. Like any other transaction, the disposal of these assets requires proper approval as well. So the disposal options of open to the firm are to sell, to scrap it, to donate it, or to retire the asset in place. So the disposal report will describe the final disposition of this fixed asset and is sent to the fixed asset accounting department for authorizing the removal of this fixed asset from the ledger. So those are for our conceptual um, uh, for the conceptual fixed asset system.